when archaeologists make big discoveries it's usually because of two reasons one because somebody who's building accidentally comes across something or for the second reason in that historians know roughly where something is to look for but can we add a third reason for that paranormal activity this is Jaro on the river Tyne there is a very famous legend here that somewhere buried is a Viking longboat Nobody has been able to find it yet, but are they looking in the wrong place? Paranormal evidence suggests maybe so. During the 8th century, the Vikings invaded Britain, and it was the east coast that got it the worst. Norsemen would invade islands and coastal areas, pillaging whatever goods they could find. They would initially start off as brutal invaders, but would later go on to set up trade with people of the land. Famous examples include Lindisfarne, but we're going to save that for another video. Norsemen would use longboats to sail across the sea and would then sail up rivers to find settlements inland. The River Tyne saw numerous invasions. According to one legend, a Viking longboat sailed up the River Tyne, but the people on board noticed some lights from a village somewhere in the distance. Rather than heading up the Tyne, they turned left. Here the River Don, a tributary in the River Tyne. Now I know what you're thinking. It's a bit narrow. Well, that is true. But Viking longboats were specially designed to be able to sail and row in water less than a metre deep. And old maps show that this river was once a lot wider and deeper than what it currently is. Now, we do not know how far up this Viking longboat got. Many historians believe it's somewhere in the Jarrow area. But one legend says it got a little bit further than that. This trickle of water is the River Don two miles further up near Bolden Colliery. Yes, you could probably walk across it. But 1,300 years ago, this river was much wider and deeper. It's believed around this area there was a small settlement. As the legend goes, the Viking longboat pulled up and the Norsemen got out, but instead of a hostile reception, the Norsemen were greeted by the warm welcome of the local villagers. They brought them in, offered them a place to stay, a feast and some alcohol. Now this caught the Norsemen off guard because many of them got drunk. During the night, however, one of the village elders gathered the villagers up and instructed each one of them to get a plank of wood and a sharp object such as a knife or an axe. Each of them had to find a member of the Norse community and put the knife against their throat with a plank of wood and stamp down, killing their Norsemen. So what about the boat? Was it sunk in the river? Or did the villagers bring it inland and hide it somewhere? Now the story takes another twist. That bridge behind me used to be an old railway bridge that goes over the River Don. However, the railway is long gone. But in the 1900s, a group of men were doing some digging work, building a sewer for a nearby housing estate when they came across what they thought appeared to be the remains of an old boat. Now, they could have stopped work, put tools down, but in an era when time is money, they decided not to. And a few years later, one man spoke out and said that he claims he saw that day a Viking longboat. So where does the paranormal come into all this? Well, not a lot of people know of the legend of the boat, but there are stories in this burn of the river of a Viking ghost. Now you see where we're coming from. Mike Halliwell used to have a column in the South Shields Gazette, a local newspaper here. 
and one day he received a letter from a man called Jim who claimed that his wife and her friend were out walking along the River Don when they saw a pair of feet sticking out of some undergrowth. As they got closer, they realised the man was dressed in different clothing from a different time period. They described him as looking like Viking. But when they got closer, they saw the man's head was covered in blood. A bright light surrounded the body and it soon disappeared. And there are several similar stories to this. It's remarkable. People are walking along here at dusk and they'll see a figure standing on the other side of the river. Others claim to have seen blood in the river itself, almost as if it was turning red. I genuinely think there is something to this legend, whether the longboat is here or maybe back down the river towards Jarro, even if it exists at all. If there is something down there, it is worth a lot of money. We're talking millions. Anyone who finds it will be selling it for a lot of money to a museum somewhere.